Hi, I'm Alon Orbach, a product manager in Android Games and Graphics. Today, I will update you on the latest on Vulkan and Android, and I'll be joined by Do Hyun Kim, who will share some key optimization techniques we recommend to maximize performance with Vulkan on Android. Vulkan is a modern GPU API that enables games and applications to get the best performance on Android devices. It is an open standard developed collaboratively by, by the industry, game engine developers, implementers, device manufacturers, and platforms working together to shape a powerful API. Vulkan is designed from the ground up to be suited to today's GPUs and chipsets. By reducing CPU overhead, apps are able to obtain better performance or power savings. Vulkan enables distribution of CPU-intensive work across multiple threads to make the most out of multi-core CPUs in Android devices. And Vulkan is where developers can access the latest GPU functionality on Android, from descriptor indexing through to ray tracing. Vulkan is now ubiquitous on Android, with 85% of active devices supporting it as of January 2023, with 77% supporting Vulkan 1.1, up 16% since last year. Alongside having widespread support, we know how important it is to have quality GPU drivers, and we are consistently progressing ways to identify driver bugs and performance issues. We've added Vulkan 1.3 support in Android 13, with supporting devices now available. It includes a variety of new features and API improvements. These were driven by developer feedback to the Vulkan Working Group, with improvements to synchronization and enabling simpler single render pass instance creation. Several features are available to make managing and diagnosing pipeline compilation easier, including dynamic state, pipeline creation cache control, and creation feedback. We're proud that Android is an open platform, enabling devices with a range of GPU capabilities. Vulkan profiles have been introduced to help developers navigate and decide what functionality to target. Our team in Android forms the Android baseline profiles, working with GPU vendors to ensure we capture what is widely supported across devices today. In parallel, we work with game engines and the Vulkan working group in Kronos to shape roadmap profiles to ensure they meet future needs and are feasible to implement. Since the last summit, we've released Android Baseline Profile 2022. This builds upon the 2021 profile and raises requirements further, including Vulkan 1.1 support and useful features such as greater control over render pass creation. It is already available on over 79% of Vulkan supported devices. You can find out more details on the Android Baseline Profiles and Vulkan support information at the Android distribution dashboards on developer.android.com. I'll now pass you over to Dohyun for some key Vulkan optimization techniques we recommend to get the best performance for your games. Hello, I'm Dohyun Kim. I'm now developer relations engineer on Android games. In this talk, we will discuss way to improve Vulkan rendering performance. Today, I will share three items, bind, vertex, and index buffer, Descriptor set update and FSR upscaling. First, find the vertex and index buffers. A VKCMD draw call requires a bound vertex buffer. If you are using VKCMD draw indexed, a bound index buffer is also required. We will evaluate two different strategies for binding the buffers. First, on the left side, we will use small independent buffer and index buffers for each object. We will bind the buffers before each draw call. Before drawing the A object, we will bind A's vertex and index buffer, and therefore drawing the B object, we will bind B's vertex and index buffer. On the right side, we will combine the vertex and index data for object A and B into a single vertex index buffer. Because the data is combined, we only need to do bind the buffers once before making draw call to draw both the A and B object. 
You don't need to rebind the buffers between your draw cores. And if you draw more objects, and add this object into the vertex and index buffer, you don't need to rebind the buffers. The method on the right has one fewer pair of binding cores compared to the method on the left. So how they do perform? To compare performance, I have made a sample application that use both methods. It draws many copies of the same teapot. Since we are evaluating the binding overhead for the left side, we will create the same number of buffers. As our draw count, even though the data is each buffer is identical. The individual binding runs at 79 FPS, the single binding runs at 84 FPS. In this situation, binding buffers once generate a 5.73% increase in performance. This test is performed on a Pixel 7 Pro device, which has a fixed low field frequency because this is related to the CPU work. To fix frequency, I will use a fixed performance mode. In games, where, where object are open, generated, and deleted, creating and destroying buffer for a new object is expensive and could decrease performance. Creating one big buffer share buffer performs better than creating many small buffers. In Vulkan, a descriptor cell links buffer and texture data are draw, draw core. Object textures usually don't change between frames. Uniform buffer data for an object might change every frame. So we will focus on uniform buffer updates. There are many ways to update uniform buffers. We will test five different methods. First, use the dynamic offset in the binded descriptor set API. The second, copy memory to mapped memory address. Third, use push constant force. Use the push descriptor set extension. Finally, fifth, core update descriptor set API. With push constant, it is important to note that they have size limit. On the Pixel 7 Pro device, the limit is the 128 byte. It is also important to note that the push descriptor set extension is not available on all devices. You will need to check for the extension and enable it if it is available. Are you interested in which one is the fastest? I'm using the same thing as before but change the implementation related to the descriptor set to compare the performance. I would test it on a Pixel 7 Pro with fixed performance mode enabled. Here is the result. On this device, updating descriptor set is slowest, dynamic offset was 4.4% faster, memory copies were 26% faster, and push constant were 21% faster. The fastest approach may change depending on device use. Push constant buffer size limit will change depending on the GPU, and some older GPU has a performance penalty with push constant. There were no performance results for the push descriptor set, since the Pixel 7 Pro Mali GPU doesn't currently support the push descriptor set extension. I'm now repeating the test on an Android 730 device, which support the extension. Performance results are similar with the Pixel 7 Pro, but push descriptor set is the slowest. Next, I will like to talk about the FSR. FSR is AMD Fidelity FX super resolution system for upscaling images. Rendering at a lower resolution requires less work for the GPU and can increase FPS. If we look at our performance result, you can see the, the rendering at 1080p runs at 20 FPS, but rendering at 540p runs at 30 FPS. However, the visual quality is clearly not good as at 540p. FSR upscaling from a lower resolution source to higher resolution target. 
We can use it to take the 540p image and upscale it to up to 1080p. This run at 26fps, which is only a bit slower than just rendering at 540p. FSR runs a compute shader as a post-process pass, so it doesn't need to any special Vulkan extension. It, it has optional settings, such as adding sharpening, which can add additional quality to the same image. You can also improve quality by increasing the resolution of the base image, such as using 720p. But the higher the resolution of the base image, the smaller your performance improvement. Here we can see the result. It can be hard to see the detail on the small mobile device, so I've scaled up part of the images. You can see FSR from the 540p to 1080p isn't as good as full 1080p, but it is better looking than 540p. And I attached a scaled up image of 64 by 64 pixels. You can identify the difference more easily. On the 540p, pixels are squeezed, but FSL has better quality than this. Even though it has the same 540p best pass result, I personally recommend to use this feature in power saving mode. If you are running on a highest graphic quality setting, it is better to draw at the full resolution, but for lower graphic quality setting or power saving mode, using FSR helps improve FPS while increased quality compared to lower resolutions with simple scaling. If you are using Unreal Engine, AMD has an Unreal plugin, so you can easily integrate to use FSR. And if you are not using the Unreal Engine, you can use it by adding a Compute Dispatcher call after the base color render pass. There is an FSR too, but it needs extra input information such as velocity. So it is usually not used in mobile environment. Therefore, it is hard to use FSR too on mobile device. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for watching.